Hello, I'm Robert Dool and you're watching a technical info material of the simulation of a heat recovery steam generator to determine its pressure loss. If you plan to ask tons of questions about how I model and analyze all two bundles of a heat recovery steam generator containing four blocks, one superheater, two evaporators and an economizer, well, I would say forget about it, I won't. I don't have to. At least for the pressure loss calculation of the flue gas side, I don't. However, what I definitely need is the thick thermal management calculation which was done by my colleagues specialized to such boilers. The calculation contains all necessary data we need. Flue gas volume flow, thermal data of flue gas as a function of temperature, inlet and outlet temperatures of flue gas for each and every two bundle. Applying the magical equation of specific heat times mass flow times temperature difference, the heat transmitted by each heat exchanger block can be calculated. This value in watts can be set as boundary condition in the CFD software on the volume representing the specific block of tubes. For example, the heat generated in the superheater is 4.3 megawatts. But two bundles mean certain resistance when flue gas flows in the block, so this resistance must be applied to the volume too. I made some two-dimensional simulations on partial geometry of two bundles to calculate the pressure loss. In case of our steam generator, these 2D simulations were needed anyway, because the heat exchanger tubes were hanged on a steel structure and this way every second row of tubes had to be shifted a bit. Because of that, we had a smaller and a bigger gap between tubes. From these simulations, the pressure loss of the flue gas in the given tube bundle can be read in a jiffy. The pressure loss of the whole bundle of a block now is just a question of multiplication. For example, it is 96 pascals for the superheater. Building the coupled fluid flow and heat transfer simulation this way and the proper mesh ensure the accurate velocity and temperature results. These are the keys to determine accurate pressure loss data of the steam generator. The flow field itself is not as complicated as a labyrinth. Streamlines travel smoothly side by side. I could only find two separation bubbles in the upper turning chamber. The thermal management calculation showed 269.3 degrees C flue gas temperature after the economizer. Our simulation presented 266. The error is around 1%. That's quite nice. We can check all pressure losses on the heat exchanger blocks. The 96 pascals of the superheater is also there and the resistances of the other two bundles match the results from the 2D calculations. Beside those, the pressure loss of the whole steam generator can be obtained from a graph generated by the CFD code. It is 444 pascals. This is what it's all about. For systems with such dimensions, just the boiler itself is 12 meters high, not to mention the connecting machinery like separators, flue gas channels and so on. So determining the pressure loss is extremely important. Just imagine how big the ventilator is that circulates the flue gas. Either it is too big or too small, that's too bad. But as you see, the job can be done easily with CFD simulation. Thanks for watching, see you next time.